Well, it's Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday. Angel and I are taking some time to answer questions you've been sending in. And we've got some good ones today, Angel. So let's just jump in and see what we've got. All right, Joe. Now that my children are older, they seem to be blaming my husband and I for the problems they have today. <laughs> We did our best raising them as we were learning on the fly ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it seems like everything we did was wrong in their eyes. Welcome to the world. Uh, Welcome to civilization. Uh, Second generation always blames the first generation. Third generation blames the second generation. It's called passing on the blame. It's not passing on the faith. It's passing on the blame. Because that's an easy thing to do. Well, it's my daddy's fault. It's my mama's fault. My daddy don't even love me. My mama hadn't left me. If my grandfather had just taken care of me, you know, if my teacher had passed me, if my coach had played me, we all thumb suck our way through life, blaming somebody else. But, you know, I used to teach all the time about Jesus became responsible for something that wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault that Adam and Eve, you know, sin got evicted and the kids started killing each other. But he became responsible for something that wasn't his fault. Mature people become responsible for things that are not their fault. If somebody asks you to go one mile, you go two. That's your shirt. Give me your coat. It's in the Bible. Jesus taught about it all the time. So don't be blaming somebody else. Take responsibility for yourself. I don't care. Listen, I didn't have a perfect dad or a perfect mom. Angel didn't have a perfect dad. We had good ones. They weren't perfect. There are no perfect people. Perfect people don't exist. So you want to comment on that? <laughs> I felt the knee bump. I, I didn't mean to do that. I really didn't. Uh, I mean, it is a weird thing. When my kids went to college, they suddenly became smarter than us. Yes. And uh, so now that, that they've been away from that for a few years, it's gotten better. Mom and dad have gotten smarter. My gosh, I yes. don't know how smart y'all have gotten lately. Yes. But, mm. uh, but it is a challenge. And this generation is very. Self-absorbed. I, I, I mean, me, I, I mean, I. Yes, but also because I think the internet and everything that they have been so inundated with information and it's kind of an overload. And uh, so it's easy to say, oh, well, it's the Republicans fault. It's the Democrats (laughs) fault. It's the president's (laughs) fault. It's Congress's fault. And it's very easy to say that. And so you just kind of get in the long list of everything. Um, So uh, like Joe said, there's no perfect parents. Oh. And um, so, uh, you know, you did the best that you could. And but I, you know, I would I wouldn't have any problem and I wouldn't hesitate to say that feels extremely disrespectful to me. Yep. And I would just really appreciate you not speaking to me in that tone. Yep. I'll speak to you respectfully. You, you treat me respectfully back. And uh, it is an adjustment. I've told Joe, you need to write a book on dealing with adult children yeah we're going on we're working on that because you know when they're we're two and they're toddlers you think this is the hardest time nope that, that thing, was a breeze all i was was tired all i was was tired what i give <laughs> trying to birth bathe feed educate correct discipline protect oh uh, you know yeah so yeah. listen uh i don't it never stops. It just never stops being a parent. <laughs> so don't be hard on yourself and don't let them be hard on you either. Yeah. That is disrespectful. And they need to, at the very least, honor you. Just so. smile. I don't have a time machine. I can't change any of that. So what do you want me to do? God bless you. Well, why don't you or say, why don't you show me in your parenting skills how a perfect parent does? Yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> Woo. it gets old. It does get old. I, I, I totally. We've all been through it. Everybody's been through it. Some of us are go- still going through it. <laughs> Whoa. So we'll just pray for you because that is, that is a challenge. Yes. All right, Joe, how do you handle conflict in marriage? My wife always seems to get quiet and I want to talk about it. So we hardly resolve much. <laughs> well, that's pretty common too. Usually it's the opposite. Usually it's the men that want to talk and the woman that wants to talk. And so you sort of got an opposite thing, but, uh, you can't make somebody talk to you. You can't make somebody listen to you. Even God can't do that. God cannot make people listen. He said, I said before you, life, death, blessing, cursing, you will choose to listen. You will choose to love. You'll choose to obey. If you don't want to, that's between you and God. I can't make you listen to me. And so best thing to do, I've counseled one couple of years ago. I said, listen, best thing to do is just keep your mouth shut. 
eventually they'll ask you, what are you thinking? And I, I remember what I said, you don't want to know why it's not good. And the Bible says, let no corrupt thing come out of your mouth. So if I was going to share right now, I wouldn't share anything good. So this would be quiet. Well, is there a problem? Yeah. <laughs> what? Well, you won't listen. You complain too much. You know, God gave you two ears and one mouth. You need to listen more than you talk. Don't interrupt me when I talk. Let me finish the statement or the sentence. I'm talking about what, what my first wife used to say to me in those first years of marriage, where it was just hell on earth because I didn't know how to be a husband. I was rude and mean and arrogant and un, uh, not polite and, and impatient. And, and it took three years to realize who's going to change. That's going to have to be me. And I was the reason for the problem. Most all of them, not all of them, but most of them. And so I realized I want to change. So, well, I think sometimes that, that you know, I'm a communicator. I'm sorry. I'm a communicator. I, I can't handle bottle stuff up. That just No, we're going to pop the top off that bottle somewhere. I, I would rather you yell at me than, I know. than hold it in. But um, because I can deal with that. I can't deal with what's going on inside of you internally. I don't know. I don't, you know, yeah. so um, one time years ago, I heard this husband and wife were kind of having a conflict and are having similar things. And she just said that the Lord spoke to her and said, reflect it back to them. Ooh, that's good. So then when they started asking questions to the more communicative spouse who would always answer it, she just get quiet. And uh, so it went on and it, then they're like, well, what's going on with you? What's going on? With you? That's how it feels when I'm trying to speak to you. It's just like I'm knocking on wood, like, you know, I'm getting nothing back. It's not a relationship. No, you know, you know, in the New Testament, Jesus always answered a question with a question. Always. Mm. What, what should I do? Well, the Lord said, "Well, I don't know. What do you think you should do? You know, what do you think's right? I don't know. What do you think's right?" And He would get them to answer their own question. Mm. I mean, it's just parable after parable. He got them to answer their own question. So if you just take a minute and think, quit making somebody have to think for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but it, the other thing is, is if you're getting angry every time you're trying to ha- resolve this conflict, that's Ooh, not working whoa, either. That's not going to do it. So, so if, if it's not working, you got to change your tactic. Just tell the truth. Just, Honey, I'd love to talk, but if you don't want to, that's fine. Maybe. I'll just have to resolve this myself. Yeah. I would like your input, but if, if I can't get it, I'm going to have to make, I'll make decision. decisions on my own. Right. <laughs> You could read it in the editorial section of the paper. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Joe. I feel like I'm walking on eggshells with my spouse. Sometimes I'm afraid to bring up something bothering me or voice my frustration because my spouse gets angry when I do. What's your advice? You need some counseling uh, because you're not changing them. Uh, Neither one of you are perfect. There's going to be problems on both sides, but you need a third party. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what you said. If you can't, if you can't get something settled, go get a third party. Get somebody to come in as a buffer between you. So you need to call your church or find somebody in town that you respect. Uh, go to lunch with somebody. Go to dinner. Say, hey, can you come talk with us? And now you got to warn your spouse. Hey, let's get a third party to hear both sides because we're not in agreement on this. And uh, and so some people just uh, it takes a third party to bust the seal that's the way god had it set up you know three are better than two it, it is not right for somebody to be bullying to the point that your home is not your sanctuary a, a haven of rest a rest a refuge you shouldn't have to feel as if you're walking on eggshells bullies are afraid that's yeah. why they bully yeah i actually have a relative that makes everybody feel like that yeah. and uh, there's exactly right the first time you stand up to them they back down yep but but it's it's like why do you put me in that position where I have to do that? I don't want to do that. But, but it keep, it keeps them having to deal with things. If I can yell and, and accuse, it'll back you up, so I don't have to deal with it. I don't want to deal with it. Don't bring it up. Don't make me deal with it, and because uh, I don't want to. And so, well, how are we going to resolve this? We're not. And like, well, <laughs> you know, that turns into that turns into a callous thing in your relationships, and that's why relationships break up eventually. Yeah, it is. Um, I used to tell people the highest divorce rate among families in our country is when the last kid leaves home. And uh, you just men, sometimes women, all of a sudden divorce happens. Why? Well, I've just stayed together because of the kids. Kids aren't here. I don't have to stay together. 
you're rude, you know, you're mean, you know, you're not loving, uh, you're mouthy. I can live better by myself. I don't have to live with that. So I don't talk to myself that way. I'm going to let you talk to me that way. So it, it's something that's going to have to be dealt with. So find a third party and just say, hey, honey, we're not getting anywhere with this, and I need some help. Maybe I'm weak. Excuse me of being the weak one. But if I am, I still need help because I do not understand what's going on with our relationship. Yeah. Uh, I used to tell people a marriage is like two people standing buck naked in the middle of the interstate. You shouldn't hold anything back or hide anything from one another. You got to be open. Two are better than one for that reason. You're totally opposite. That's why God put you together. You marry your 180 degree total opposite. And that's why people end up in a marriage counseling. What's wrong? I said, you're different. When are they going to change? They're not going to change. You married somebody opposite as God's gift for you. You already had you. There's a bumper sticker in Texas that says when two people are just alike, one of you is not needed. So you marry your opposite by God's design. And it's a gift. So I learned how to embrace that. Well, and we've all been to somebody's home where you feel like you're walking on eggshells. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. just got in a fight or you walked in on something. That is just- it's just in the air. Nobody yeah. said that you can just feel like, man, something's been, some wrong's been going on here, boys. But it's, it's miserable and it makes everybody uncomfortable. And you don't go back. Would you like to come back? Nope. Don't, don't got something else to do. No, because and, and, and to, you, so I determined years ago, I'm going to have peace in my home. Yes. And I've had more people say your home is so peaceful and yes. welcoming yeah. because I'm not going to, I don't want to be treated like that. And I'm not going to treat others like no. that either. No. So, um, no. so it is a very important that you have a peaceful home yeah. that you feel safe in. So, yeah, I agree with Joe that, that that's something that's escalated to a point that needs an intervention. Yeah. So, and there's no shame in counseling. No, there is not. No, thank God. Two are better than one and three are better than two. The Bible says so. So find somebody, get somebody to talk to you, talk with you. Yeah. You know, guys, I wanted to address something for just a minute, if you don't mind. I wanted to take a second and just thank our partners. Yes. Um, I can't tell you how many times or how encouraging it is, because we know the Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So when you take, especially in times like this, where the economy is kind of, you know, stressing and everything, but you still take time to honor God and you're giving, but you also uh, believe in, in uh, the marriage in the family and parenting. And um, thank you for supporting us and being a part of it. It has made a difference in so many lives. We could not be doing what we're doing today without you, our partners. This would not be possible. The equipment uh, being we're on three times a week on our podcast. Uh, we travel all over the country. We're in two different States this last weekend, uh, five days, two States doing seminars, but we could not do that without our partners. It would not be possible. So thank you guys. We are changing lives. People are being saved. Marriages are being restored. We get test owners every weekend of uh, things that have happened. It's just, it's phenomenal. As a matter of fact, this was so cool. Uh, I'd like to share this with you that there was a couple that came up to us after the service and they said they had six children and they said they had almost divorced several times. And the the husband starts crying as he's telling us, he goes, honestly, your book, your books and your encouragement and your preaching has got us together and we are never going to divorce. Come on. And I'm telling you, it was just, it's uh, awesome. So man. you have a part of that. Thank we you. get to heaven. If you, if you give to the ministry, you're going to have part of that. Seed. That's exactly and that's right. Just one of many, many lives that yeah. we see change. So thank you so much. Thank and, you guys. Uh, and uh, so and if you would like to consider becoming a partner, you can always uh, check us out at Joe McGee ministries.com. Very and, simple. Uh, yeah. And just uh, sign up there, but we love you very much. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on Mondays. You guys have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time. Bless you guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it all there to help you, your marriage and your family succeed.